Assalamu alaikum, everyone. This is uh, Sharik Arfani, your brother from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, I would like to, um, you know, officially welcome you to the ICNA National Symposium. The theme for today is, uh, indeed, I am near. Um, so uh, that is the theme, and inshallah, we're going to have uh, a packed seminar. So, um, with that being said, we, um, uh, you know, we, we'd like to take this time now to address some questions that the uh, that the people who are watching the show may have. So please make sure that you go on and submit your questions. Um, so right now we have all three of the speakers that just spoke, and um, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to. So. Um, First, um, excuse me, speakers. I'm gonna. I have some very um, hard-hitting questions. So, inshallah, I hope. Um, I think we need to talk about these things. So, um, the question that I have first is for uh, Dr. Medea Tassin. Under the recent circumstances, we witnessed as China experienced a surge in divorce rates. What are some tips and advice for both young and seasoned Muslim couples to protect us from this phenomenon? Um, that, that is an excellent question. Um, absolutely, because we're so confined in our quarters, all of the usual communication styles we have with each other, um, it all kind of gets magnified, right? Because we're in a tight space. So I think something that we have to do is we have to be able to let go of our usual patterns and work on better ways of improving our communication with each other, give each other space um, to be separate from each other. A lot of times, you know, as a spouse, you're able to leave the home and go do something else and focus on you as a person in that relationship. And that gets difficult now. So you need to make some self time for yourself as well as time for the other person. You know, make sure that you still schedule date nights, you know, but without the phones, without the media. Work on ways that you can strengthen your late relationship in this new time that we find ourselves in. Um, there's an excellent webinar on this that I would recommend to everybody. Um, it was done by Mass, um, as well as the FYI that I'm a part of last night. So I would recommend everyone to check that out, which really goes into these relationships and how can we strengthen them during this time. And the toolkit that I referenced earlier also has an entire section on relationships and couples and how can we work on this communication so that we don't head towards this path of constant fighting and struggling that leads to, to, to difficult times. Okay, Dr. Madiha. Um, the next question I have is uh, for Dr. Altaf. So with schools adjourned for a few months, maybe some until September, and adults working from home, how can we engage, how can parents engage with children more effectively in a way that is beneficial? <laughs> so I know just a few minutes left. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, rasulullah. My first question to Sheikh Yasser is uh, I, uh, about the, uh, the YQ mocktail because I think I want to make sure that for the date night that Dr. Madiha just mentioned, we want to make sure we have enough mocktails on hand. And then Sheikh Yasser, who is still using Latin for dua, Habibi? <laughs> He's such a scholar. He's such a scholar. He's, he lives in another world. <laughs> He's like, Swahili or Latin. I was like, La -la who's using Latin? I got to explain myself, man. <laughs> Today morning, I read an article in a magazine, and the guy was talking about learning Latin. So it was just in my head. That's why. Sorry. <laughs> you, know, you know we love you. So uh, this question is actually very important, and I think it's giving us a, a dose of uh, reality that the pace at which we were moving was really very assembly line. You know, parents had work, kids had school, and everything was just sort of moving along. And we were really sacrificing a lot of family to be able to achieve some, some kind of success. So if the children are going to be home, and most likely we are also going to be home and not you know, able to go to work, I think it's high time that we start to inculcate in our children really the, the love of deen the love of the religion and how loving the religion and thriving in the religion is actually going to be the source of their success. Usually it comes at the expense of religion, right? So everyone is rushing through prayer, rushing to get to the next meeting, rushing, you know, even fasts is not really done with a whole lot of uh, uh, preparation and khushu, if you will. So I'm hoping that we can take some concrete steps. I know the, uh, uh, the FYI has mentioned the Peaceful Families Project, uh, Yaqeen Institute has been doing seminar webinars as well and a lot of resources. Also take advantage of reading. Ta you know, we are Ummah that's really, I don't know what happened, stopped reading. And these lectures are great to watch, but read a little bit. 
and figure out what may work for your family. As Sheikh Yasser said, there's no magic dua for, you know, to, to get rid of everything. And there's also no magic one publication or one lecture. So take, take your time and assess. What are the major areas that our family needs to focus on with our children, the relationship with our children? And then slowly go about looking up resources that you can implement. We have, alhamdulillah, all the time to be able to do that now that we used to use, as I mentioned, to commute and to rush here and there and travel. And I'm hoping we spend it, inshallah, on improving uh, the family. Jazakallah uh, khairan, Dr. Altaf. So uh, the next question that I have is from um, one of our viewers. They're asking uh, to Sheikh Yasser Qadi, can we make dua in any language uh, in the Witr prayer? So if you're asking, uh, this is a question that once again, you're going to find a spectrum of opinion amongst the fuqaha. Uh, and I know some of the scholars of the madhabs are strict and they say that it must be done in Arabic only. However, my teacher and the madhab that I follow, Sheikh Shantiti and others were very explicit on this point. Uh, and that is that the arkan of salah have to be in Arabic, no question. The, the, the subhana rabbil a'la, Allahu Akbar, you know, Fatiha, this must be in Arabic. Anything above and beyond the arkan uh, and included in that is dua. It is not a necessary condition that it's in Arabic. And therefore, uh, the perspective that they have is that your own personal du'as, we're not talking about a congregational issue because that might lead to other issues, but your own personal du'a, you may make du'a in your own language. Now that having been said, it is a minority position. And so if you stick with the majority, especially when it comes to the, the witr uh, timing of du'a, uh, that is different than the timing of du'a in sajda. So the sajda du'a, you'll find more opinions. And the sajda, when you're in sajda, our Prophet Sallallahu said, hadith is in Abu Dawood, that uh, whenever you are in sajda, increase in your dua, because faqaminun and yustajaba lakum, you, it is very likely you will be responded to. So our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi recommended making dua in sajda. He also recommended making dua before the taslim. Those two time slots, you'll find a lot more scholars say you can make dua in any language. However, you're asking about with it in particular, and I'll tell you that is a very minority position, which I personally am sympathetic to, but you're going to find a lot of others say, no, 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 stick with the, um, uh, the Arabic of, of the uh, dua of with it. And so Allah Azza wa knows best. Uh, Sheikh Yasser, another question for you is um, in the beginning of the session, we had our uh, uh, winner of the Quran competition recite some verses of the Quran. Um, and he ended with, So I, I just wanted to ask you um, if you could shed some light on dua and its destiny or in its relationship with destiny. Uh, that's alhamdulillah, a very beautiful question which is actually answered in a hadith in Abu Dawood. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that nothing repels qadr except for dua. Nothing changes qadr except for dua. So we learn therefore that dua has the power to change qadr. Now, this is a deeper topic and again, time is always limited, but qadr has levels. Ibn Qayyim mentions five levels of qadr in, 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 in his book, uh, Al-Shifa al alid And these five levels, they are, I mean, you know, you can find them in the book, but the point is that the dua uh, is at one of the lower levels of qadr. It can change what the angels think is going to happen, but Allah already knows it will be changed. And so, for example, it is possible that on Laylatul Qadr, the angels are told this person is going to die on this year because every year's, uh, uh, you know, um, every year's assignments are given on Laylatul Qadr. So the angel of death is told on Laylatul Qadr that this person will die on the 17th of, let's say, Jamaat al-Thani, let's say. Okay, so he, he, he thinks, the angel thinks this is the year. But that guy is making dua, his family is making dua. And on the day of the 17th, Every day, Allah Azza wa makes a decision. On the morning of the 17th, the angel says, you know what? His dua has kicked in. He's not going to die. Everybody thought he's going to die in the heavens up there. The angels thought that's it. He's going to come. His family might have thought his time has come. But because of his dua, his qadr was changed. But 
in the higher level of Qadr, and the highest level is of course Lawh al Mahfud, in the highest level of Qadr, Allah knew that a lower level would change because of dua. And this is again in the Quran very clear. Allah Azza wa Jal erases what He wants from the book, and Allah allows to pass what He wants from the book, and indeed with Him is the original book. So Qadr changes the lower levels of dua, but of course, nothing can change what Allah has willed in the eternal decree. And that is something, and of course, the eternal decree, it allows a change in the lower decrees, the decrees of the day, the decrees of the year, the decrees of the life. These are things that can be changed, but the eternal decree knows it will change because of dua. Hope that answers your question. Jazakallah khair. Um, <clears throat> next question, um, I'll, I'll pose it to uh, Dr. Madiha. Uh, youth is going through depression, anxiety because of social distancing and, uh, you know, missing friends and other events. How do we, um, you know, while keeping them, you know, you want to limit their screen time, but how do you balance, um, you know, those feelings, especially amongst the youth? Right. Um, that's an excellent question. And I, and I see a sort of a connected issue there, which is, the bigger picture of the relationship that parents have with youth during this time and, and how do you balance that? Because that's really the heart of whatever your, your children, your teenage children are experiencing. So before you think about, you know, what are they going through in terms of the outside world and school and what they're missing out on, focus on their foundation, which is their relationship with you. So if you can use this time to give them comfort to be there for them, to listen to whatever they're feeling without judging them, without, you know, kind of belittling them, you know, instead of saying things like, well, there's people out there, you know, who actually are dying from this illness and you're worried about your graduation, right? So instead of belittling them with things like that and making them feel like their worries about, you know, canceled graduation or missing friends is small, just be there to listen to them. If you can give them that comfort, then they know they have you there as their foundation. So that's the first, that's the first and probably more most central thing you can do for them to kind of help them get through. But then also once you've done that listening, just listen without judgment, then kind of talk to them about what is it that they're missing out on um, and maybe come up with some strategies from them that really help them kind of empower them to take action and deal with their new reality. So if it's missing friends, right, thinking about how you might have some social virtual hangouts, right, that you might set up for your children with their friends. Um, if it was certain activities that they're missing out on, right, how can you replace those activities? But again, do it in a non-judgmental, open, listening way where they're also kind of working together with you to come up with the solution. Jazakallah cool. khair, Dr. Madiha. Um, Dr. Altaf, I had a, uh, the next question is for you. So in these time of uncertainty, um, you know, when we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, uh, in, especially financially, how do we, you know, what, what tips would you have for people um, encouraging them? You know, it, it's hard to, do we save or do we donate? You know, like the whole consumerist mentality um, has kind of taken us over. So if you had some tips for, for that. Well, it's interesting that uh, uh, you would ask a question about saving um, and uh, and finances because those of us who have been, you know, sort of living uh, uh, and and routinely, right? We have many things that are automatically billed, automatically billed. So even many of our bills are just paid monthly, you know, by bank account or credit card, and we're not even really thinking about the amounts of the bills and whatnot. So what my wife and I, and I recommend that for others, is to start to think and to look at actually very carefully, what are the expenses, right? What are the expenses that we could do without? And, and what are the savings that, that could come from, from basically not you know, uh, uh, continuing to, to spend in that way? And of course, the interesting thing here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of rizq, right? Rizq is something that is uh, 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 written for us. But it doesn't mean that we have to basically be fatalistic and just wait and say, well, you know, I'll just see what the outcome of that, that record is. As Sheikh uh, Yasser Qadi just mentioned, it is critical. He used the word constraint in, you know, in terms of uh, 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 dua, that it's also critical to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also not only constrains, but also expands the risk of whomever he wills. 
And with sadaqah, what I would say is, whatever you do, don't pull back on the sadaqah. If you have, for example, a ongoing donation, a recurring donation happening with whatever organization or charity or whatever you're supporting, don't go there first. The instinct always is, let me go there first and pull back on the sadaqah. In fact, it may be the sadaqah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ بِلَيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ those who spend of their wealth by night and by day. Sirran wa alania, Both in public and in private. Uh, for what do they have? They have two things for sure. Falahum ajrahum in the rabbihim. There's a reward for them from their Lord. But the second part is what Dr. Madiha mentioned and many of us who are you know, discussing mental health. The second part is critical. The ones who spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun. They are the ones upon whom neither fear nor anxiety or grief touch them. In this time of uncertainty, because that's where the questioner started off, it is critical that we are connected directly to the divine with every cell in our body to say that that's not where I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull back on the other hand, and I know, and I don't mean to be preaching about this because everyone's schedule is different, whatever time is not you know, always on our side, so we may still be eating out. And that's fine. We, my wife and I still have to do that because there are days when the schedule is just packed. And we are supporting the Muslim businesses because they can't also suffer. They are often the, you know, the biggest donors and supporters of our community activities. But on the other hand, if we do a moderation and say, you know, a couple times in the week, we will eat at home, make something simple and, 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 you know, and, and sort of you know, just live off of that. Maybe then take that and see how much are we saving from that. Maybe there are other sort of items that, uh, and by the way, good news is coming. The car insurance companies are now discussing actively how much to you know, return back to uh, the, 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 the folks who are, have their cars insured because we're not using them as often. We're not even going you know, hardly anywhere. So Allah will replace the wealth. The beautiful thing with sadaqah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly replace the wealth, which is the dua we make. Allahumma aati munfiqan khalafa. Oh Allah, give to the person something in, in place of what they have spent. So please... Begin with your finances. Look to see every aspect of it. Maybe even in your phone and cable TV and internet plans, there are places where you can save and say, you know what, we actually don't need all these channels. So we'll you know, scale back for this next few you know, months or however long this period is. Look to see where you can save. Any other aspects of your living lifestyle that you can inshallah cut back on. But don't go to sadaqah first. Don't cut back on sadaqah. Inshallah, inshallah, Allah will respond and multiply those blessings in ways you can't imagine. And it also reminds me to say, help and support ikna, ikna.org forward slash donate. Thank you. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Altaf. Um, so we have one final question uh, for Sheikh Yasir Fadi. Um, so uh, it's it's been asked a lot of times and there's several, uh, I guess, resources out there. But uh, just to kind of clarify with Ramadan coming around the corner, the question was, is it permitted um, to pray Juma and Tarawi following uh, an Imam virtually? Uh, so this question has been on the minds of a lot of uh, people and um, the Fiqh Council of North America uh, uh, has drafted a fatwa uh, which is going to be made public very soon. Uh, so you're hearing it from me for the first time but it is going to be made public within this week. Uh, and also uh, Amja has also given a fatwa similarly the European Fiqh Council has also given a fatwa uh, that all of us are saying the same thing, and that is that virtual congregations are not something that uh, we find a need to rethink through because being in a jama'ah is not a necessary condition for the salah to be accepted. Therefore, even in circumstances such as ours, since the jama'ah is not daruri, there's no need to redefine what a jama'ah is. And therefore, the default remains, which is that a jama'ah can only take place when you're in the physical proximity, the imam and the ma'mum have to be a reasonable distance within one another. So no council, as far as I know, and I'm doing research on this for the last two weeks, no council across the globe, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, the Emirates, uh, Kuwait, um, uh, our councils, the Fiqh Council, Amja, no council has allowed a virtual jama'ah. And the reasons for this are obvious because if we were to open this door, why couldn't you do a jama'ah with Mecca then? You know, even if they're going to pray Dhuhr, you're playing Isha, but still you get the point here. You know what I'm saying? Why couldn't you do that if you're going to, what's going to define the distance? The jama'ah does require an actual congregation. And because it is not a necessary 
factor for the salah to be accepted, there is no reason to rethink through uh, the traditional understanding of jama'ah. What we can say, however, is that especially for Jumu'ah, we do encourage people to listen to the khutbah to get into the spirit of Jumu'ah. Our fatwa does say that in fact for Eid, because guys start thinking of Eid, we were going to have Eids alone, think about this, may Allah protect us, but 99% it looks like we will be praying Eid in our living rooms, ourselves, with our families. You know, and already my teenagers are saying they're going to wear their pajamas. Like, no, you're going to do that. It's like, there's no need to wear it. No, come back. Okay. So the point is that we have to start thinking around these types of things that we do want to have the spirit of Eid and the spirit of Jumu'ah. And what that means is I told them, even if nobody's there, you're going to dress up because it's us, because the angels are there, because this is the spirit of Eid. So we were going to request everybody to dress up to listen to a live khutbah, but they are not actually a part of the jama'ah. And they can pray nafil on their own for the case of Eid. And in the case of Jumu'ah, they will pray Zuhr because it will not constitute an actual jama'ah. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Jazakallahu khairan. So uh, that brings uh, us to an end for the first panel session. So Jazakallah khair, the speakers, for your amazing advice and insights and knowledge that you have imparted upon us. So may Allah uh, increase your wealth, your health, and keep you keep you all safe. Uh, Jazakallahu khair. Uh, just one thing that I'd like to remind before I sign off and hand over is um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, uh, that even though the convention that we all miss and love um, is not able to go on, um, you know, the, this work never stops. That's that's what I wanted to kind of emphasize on that. Alhamdulillah, we have the symposium. Um, we have different departments and wings of ICNA uh, proactively out there on the front lines taking care of the community in need. So I would uh, really encourage and urge all of you to take some time and donate um, at uh, www.ikna.org forward slash donate. So Jazakallah khair for your time.